So I've grabbed myself some vitamins, and the question obviously is, well, are they actually any good? Are they really providing me any benefit? But, well, it's too late now. I've spent the money, and therefore I just have to hope for the best. Ideally, what I'd like to know is, is there a benefit to buying vitamins before I spend the money? And that is a bit similar to the in-memory option when it comes to the Oracle database. I've done the following in-memory demo dozens of times for various customers. And that is we create the following simple sort of warehouse style schema. I've got 10,000 customers, I've got 1,200 products, and I load up about 400 million theoretical sales transactions. And then what we do is a typical style analytic sort of query. And you can see there that on my laptop, which is obviously constrained, it takes about 90 seconds to run. But here's the kaboom moment. We take that same setup and we put the tables into the in-memory column store, we run the same complicated query, and bang, two seconds. It literally blows people's minds when I show them this demo. And as you can imagine, in-memory is an absolute no-brainer when it comes to data warehouses. But the reality is, most people nowadays have somewhat more nuanced to the way their databases work. They're typically not a pure data warehouse. They're not pure transactional. They're a blend of the two. So when it comes to in-memory, the big question is, should I be using in-memory for these particular databases? How do I know if in-memory is going to be the good option that it can be for data warehouses? It's a bit like buying vitamins. We're back to that thing of, should I buy the vitamins? How can I know if they're gonna be beneficial before I spend the money? There's two things that can help here. Number one, if you're on a recent version or recent RU of 19C, we introduce the base level setting for the in-memory parameter. This gives you up to 16 gigs of in-memory for free, no extra license required. This is an excellent first cut of being able to see whether in-memory is going to be beneficial to you. You can grab a few objects and throw them into these 16 gigs of in-memory and see if you get some benefits. For many people, that'll be enough, but obviously it still needs a bit of analysis, some testing, knowing which objects to put into the in-memory store, assessing what kind of benefit you're going to get, etc. It's a fairly exhaustive exercise to make sure you're going to get that benefit before you spend that money. Ideally, we'd like a more holistic view, something that looks at my entire database landscape or everything inside the database and tells me, is it worthwhile committing to in-memory? Am I going to see these spectacular benefits? And from 19.20 onwards, we've got exactly that, something that's really gonna help you. You simply point it at your database with your real workloads, and it's going to make an assessment for you without a lot of trouble on your part. As an example, well, I don't have a real workload running on my laptop, so I'll synthesize one. But in terms of this, to try to give that more nuanced look at a typical database workload, I've got a couple of procedures here. The first procedure does two hours of short, sharp, OLTP style transactions. Lots of little small transactions that are typical in a transactional style kind of uh, operation. The other procedure does much more analytical style queries, summaries, trend analysis, aggregations, etc. Now we're gonna run both of these to have a blend of operations in this one database. So I can control how the sort of split between these two kinds of workloads, I've got a little benchmark routine here called smash my DB, and I can pass in the number of background jobs that will be submitted. Each of these background jobs will be one or the other, either analytical style or transactional style, and I can control the number of each that I want to submit. In this case, I'm gonna smash my database with six transactional style operations and four analytic ones. I'll submit them and I'll commit the job. And we can see from VDollar session that now I've got 10 jobs running, being that split of both analytic and transactional style operations running on my warehouse. I'll pop some more vitamins and we'll come back in a couple of hours once that is done. Now that they're finished, I'm gonna run the typical AWR report script not to actually generate an AWR report, but just it's a nice, easy, lazy way of getting the list of snapshots that have run over the last few days or so. So as you can see, 7963 to 7965 represents the last couple of hours, which is how long my little sort of smash my DB process was running for. I can now ask 
the database, to examine the AWR data that's being captured to tell me what it thinks in terms of an in-memory operation for this database. I simply call the new procedure DBMS in-memory advice. I pass in the two snapshots, so it has a range of data to work with. And with a little bit of analysis, out pops a simple result. The in-memory advisor has recommended that in-memory is a good option for this database. Now, that was to be expected because as we saw, I did about 40% analytic workload and 60% transactional workload. Anything above 20% is gonna be a good fit for in-memory to give you some significant benefits. But of course, the best part is I didn't really have to do anything. I simply grabbed this routine, grabbed a list of snapshots, ran it against my real workload on my real database, and it came up with a nice simple one line summary saying yes, in memory is a good option, or maybe not some further analysis might be required. So the level of complexity has been dramatically reduced in order for you to make those important decisions about whether in memory is going to be a good fit for your database. It's just a single API call. Enjoy.